Bonjour et bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode de Portrait de Femmes du Monde où j'interview une femme ghanéenne qui s'appelle Zouera. J'ai déjà interviewé une femme ghanéenne, euh, j'ai déjà sorti la vidéo, je te mets le lien là ou là, euh, je sais pas, faut que tu cliques euh, sur un des deux côtés si tu veux la voir. Cette vidéo là, comme tu as pu le voir, elle est assez longue, euh, j'ai essayé de couper au maximum mais en fait tout était très intéressant donc j'ai pas voulu couper plus. Du coup, si tu comprends l'anglais, tu peux la mettre en fond, faire autre chose en même temps euh, que tu écoutes la vidéo. Et si, euh, sinon, euh, ben, tu peux la regarder en plusieurs fois, sachant que c'est moi qui ai fait les sous-titres. Le cadrage n'est pas tip-top non plus. Au début, on voit un ventilo sur le côté, là. Après, il y a ma tête qui est à moitié coupée. Mais bon, pour une fois, le son est bon. Donc, je suis assez contente de ça. Dans cette vidéo, on va parler de la relation entre les hommes et les femmes euh, au Ghana. On va parler aussi que euh, beaucoup de femmes ghanéennes ont tendance à être attirées par l'argent et le superficiel. Euh, on va aussi euh, parler de la manière de s'habiller, du harcèlement de rue, euh, des règles, de contraception, euh, de maladies sexuellement transmissibles comme le sida également. Donc voilà, plein d'autres choses euh, que, qui sont très intéressantes. Euh, je t'invite donc à voir la vidéo, à réagir dans les commentaires s'il y a des choses que tu as apprises, qui te choquent ou euh, que tu es d'accord avec ça, voilà, et n'oublie pas de t'abonner, je le dis jamais, mais n'oublie pas de t'abonner pour voir les autres vidéos, les autres portraits de femmes du monde que je vais pouvoir faire autour du monde, ou mes vidéos de voyage, ou mes vidéos à la maison, où je parle face cam, tout ça, donc voilà, je te remercie beaucoup, et euh, ben, je te laisse regarder la vidéo.
the NDC, like the political parties, mm -hmm. the vice president is a lady, and okay. I'm really excited wow. because mm -hmm. things are changing, changing. and, and then um, people are realizing, and even when you go to the MP sites, you realize that um, there are a lot of females in the political system. Mm -hmm. So you go to offices and you get a lady as the MD, you get the uh, lady as the HR manager and a whole lot. So it's, it, it was, it's a sad story, but gradually but persistently, um, the women in Ghana are bridging the gap. And okay. I hope that it, it continues mm -hmm. to um, okay. the future generations. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Do you think that the women have the same rights than men here in Ghana? Um, currently, yeah, we have um, gender equality mm -hmm. and then a lot of activists. Mm -hmm. Myself, I'm a part of um, the Action Aid global platform mm -hmm. okay. and sometimes we go to communities, talk to kids like the youth. I did an internship with uh, an NGO called Khalid, Center for Active Learning mm -hmm. and Integrated Development, where they had um, girls groups where in the rural communities where they um, put them into girls clubs in their various mm -hmm. schools they mentor them and teach them how to stand up for themselves how to keep themselves clean right from personal hygiene to um, self-development public speaking and mm -hmm. a whole lot of stuff yeah okay. so it was a very good thing and I served as a role model because I was almost um, finishing my um, degree mm -hmm. and so I got there and you get people like um, some of the girls that I want to be like you mm -hmm. like dress like you okay. be able to speak politely mm -hmm. and confident like you and it was it was amazing it was a nice experience that people in the rural communities want to get out to the world yes. and show their talents and what mm -hmm. they've got yeah so um today in ghana there is gender equality and so whatever position a man can go for as a lady if you have the qualifications you can equally go for the same position okay. you being a lady your tribe or where you come from your religion doesn't stop you from mm -hmm. going or aiming higher Okay. in Ghana and so it's a good thing but mm -hmm. sometimes there are uh, setbacks mm -hmm. because sometimes you go somewhere because there are people to help the person um, speak up for herself then the person is being timid mm -hmm. you go to places and because she's a lady no she's put on a veil no mm -hmm. so um, it's something Ghana has really stood up uh, from um, to beginning of 2019 to 2020, Ghana has really um, stood up for people. You hear um, the um, women's um, advocates coming up to stand up for those girls. Mm -hmm. If the news gets out, okay. they stand up for them and they are treated fairly and everything goes on as planned. So I'm really happy and Ghana is really doing well when it comes to gender equality. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about the relationship between men and women here in Ghana? Okay, um, the relationship between men and women here are cool because um, primarily um, from our homes, mm -hmm. we were born with, uh, born together with like male children and female children. Yes. So we socialize, you live with them. Mm -hmm. You step out and go to school in your classroom. It's not only for girls or it's mm -hmm. not only for boys. Um, usually from the um kindergarten yes. to the um, junior high school mm -hmm. stage it's a mixture okay. of, of both sexes mm -hmm. so you get to relate with each other know how people react the opposite sex react mm -hmm. when it has to do with um particular instances mm -hmm. you know who the strong ones are and who the weak ones are just like women we, they say we are weak there are some men to when approach with certain situations they also go cold mm -hmm. and some women also take charge in that process so it, it, it's it's um a mixture and i think ghana it's, it's okay mm -hmm. as you but we do have um senior high schools that are strictly female schools okay. and strictly male schools mm -hmm. even with that um there are some days set aside like socialization either the female school comes to the male school mm -hmm. or the male school goes to the female school so so that they socialize together yeah, have okay. fun okay. yeah so um the relationship between males and female are cordial okay yes and when it comes to love 
How does happen? Like, how do you flirt with someone? Um. Because you told me there is a lot of about money in this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, I think you like your daily life. You move from your house to your work to school and a whole lot of places, places of. Um, socialization like the mall the cinema mm -hmm. you meet people mm -hmm. and then some might someone might just spot you and be like wow this lady is beautiful mm -hmm. the person might approach you and you guys will get talking and most you... of the time it's the boy who yeah um mm -hmm. with that aspect the women are reluctant mm -hmm. in approaching the mm -hmm. men and being like oh you're a nice person Unless, of course, the person is a celebrity or okay. a popular person okay. that maybe you just see and be like, yay, mm -hmm. I want to take a picture yeah, with I you. See. Yeah, that's different. Mm -hmm. But when you see, um, like, just a normal person, mm -hmm. the person is not a celebrity, the person is not popular, usually um, it would take a lady with guts to really go ahead and be like, yeah, I'm this person. But there are some ladies who really do that, mm -hmm. but they are just a handful. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then um, there's this instance or situation in Ghana where um, if you have flashy cars, maybe a nice house, mm -hmm. maybe have money, like kind of show yourself on social media, um, there's it draws some Ghanaians have named them slay queens. Slay queens, like um, the fashionistas, oh, yeah, like okay. those who, yeah, they okay. call them slay queens here. Yeah. So it draws those people to you mm -hmm. because of the money. Some people just want to sit in your car, take pictures. Oh yeah, this girl knows this guy. It's fame. The person is getting, the person gets to a higher place. Like the person gets uh, a lot of followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. The person gets followers on um, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. So basically, um, some girls are just um, about material things and then um, cars clothes, shoes, mm -hmm. that's all their life is about. And there are the section of ladies who are go-getters, like they are up for it. Whatever they are spending is from their sweats, like they really work, mm -hmm. they are religious, they are morally brought upright and yeah, there's always a mixture mm -hmm. of the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I think that the good is outweighing the bad. I, I know and I pray that um, in the future, Ghana is going to be great mm -hmm. and then the society will be a good one. Okay. Yeah. And then when um, men and women flirt are flirting together, mm -hmm. what happens next? Um when if there are some people who don't see like sex as anything, mm -hmm. they will just give it for you to give them something like a phone. And of late in the Ghanaian society iPhone has become a big thing. Why? Like even in school, like when I was in school, um, I did my uh, diploma from um, 2013 to 2015, mm -hmm. and I continued 2015 to 2018. Okay. That's my degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the classroom, even in the lecture hall, you realize that um, if you don't have an iPhone, you are not qualified to be among some oh, group of girls. Okay, you understand. Mm -hmm. You, you should have some um you should have an iphone you should be able to and especially snapchat all the go is snapchat taking okay. videos and showing okay. and because of the filters it makes them look beautiful mm -hmm. uh -huh. so people want to be like that so you get people saying give i, I just need an iphone I, I need this i need that so yeah they'll flirt and they'll meet each other they'll do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. and Sometimes it doesn't end well. Okay. Yeah. Most and uh, when it is usually money and material centered, you have that way. It doesn't usually go well. And most of the guys too of late have realized that that is all most of the girls are looking for. Mm -hmm. They are looking for the money, the mm -hmm. cars to sit in, and so a friend, a, a guy could just borrow a friend's car, uh -huh. can't pick a girl up. And he just has an iPhone. Mm -hmm. That is all he needs to have to sleep with a girl. Mm -hmm. And it's so sad. Yes. It's it's it's, uh, it's it's demoralizing. Mm -hmm. That's for um, both girl and boys. It's yeah, sad. It, it's sad yeah, because like yeah, because um, um, today's world there are a whole lot of diseases that could be transmitted sexually and yeah. a whole lot of stuff. But 
I don't know. Some, I think they are being ignorant of the fact that they, they, they want their pleasure more than the risk they are putting themselves mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. And so you get a high rate of teenage pregnancies mm -hmm. and a high rate of abortion, sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. and the okay. like. And the sad part is people contract HIV mm -hmm. and there's a virus, some people have AIDS and they wouldn't own up to tell you. Okay. So they feel like, I got it through this. Mm -hmm. So why would I tell you? You should also get it. So it keeps spreading uh -huh. and spreading. People know about condom and protection. Yeah, so people happen. people know about it. It's something they've always picked, um, talked about and the, the, the family planning mm -hmm. stuff. But kids, um, the youth are always ignorant. They, they don't choose. They don't know. There are a whole lot of um, different varieties of condoms. Mm -hmm. There are even the female ones. Yes. And the, the family planning methods that you could use to prevent pregnancies. Mm -hmm. But sadly, uh, the youths don't use it. And there are people in the very extreme rural communities mm -hmm. who do not even know okay. that there is anything called family planning. Mm -hmm. And I think Ghana is going to that stage where um they'll be able to spread information okay. because if i don't fall sick and i'm in the village i don't get to the hospital mm -hmm. i don't get being told what this is yes. yes so and some of the communities have chips compound it's smaller than a clinic okay they're like a first aid mm -hmm. where they could attend to but even that place they don't have all the the uh, adequate um, um, materials, mm -hmm. infrastructure, and things they need. So okay. information is usually mm -hmm. not gotten to them as it's expected. But so. everybody can go to the fam uh, how do you call it family planning. Yeah, everybody, everybody, every. Um, it's free. Yes, mm -hmm. you could go to the hospital and and and, and speak to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You want maybe you are someone who can't stop having sex mm -hmm. you enjoy it and but then you don't want to get pregnant mm -hmm. so they would um there are options they mm -hmm. would uh, take you through all the options yeah, for and contraception if, yes mm -hmm. and then you pick which one either you can pick a condom mm -hmm. you can pick any of the other mm -hmm. uh, options they'll give you mm -hmm. and then if that's what you want they'll do it for okay. you you don't really have to pay for oh, okay it. Yes. that's very good yeah, yeah. Does all the women should get married? Yeah. Uh, hmm, that one I'm not really sure. <laughs> because um, I've, I think um, the last time I read about um, the population, the number of females are more than males. Yes. I think that um, the ratio, I think um, worldwide, is one man to seven mm -hmm. women. So it is going to be everybody, every woman can get married, but uh, as to whether in Ghana. in Ghana, yeah, everyone can. But um, but it's it's an option or it's kind of mandatory when you are a woman. You uh, need it's to not, be married. It's not mandatory. Okay. Um, you see, in, in the Ghanaian society, there are um, in Islam per se. Mm -hmm. It is one of um, the things a lady should achieve mm -hmm. to get the blessings from mm -hmm. Allah. It, it, it's just nice to get married. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, that it's, is the, it's the religion. Yes, the, that's the religious mm -hmm. view of it. And I think Christianity also preaches mm -hmm. marriage too. But then um, there are people who uh, would have gone through um, bad times or hard times through mm -hmm. relationships yes. and maybe even courting mm -hmm. that would have made a person feel like I'm not lucky when it comes to love mm -hmm. so I'm not getting married okay yeah so the person is by herself mm -hmm. but those women you are the age of 30 mm -hmm. upwards 30 okay. 35 yes. 30 31 32 33 upwards who are not married are giving some names some people call them Bazawara, some people call them Sisto. And what does it mean? Um, it's like you are grown and you are not married. Okay. You are still single. And it's it's a bad thing? Yeah, it's a okay. bad thing because when you call them that name, they get pissed. Uh -huh. Yeah, so every lady wants to get married. Okay. So you realize that the youth, when they get, especially the ladies, mm -hmm. when they get to the ages of 
20, 21 to 28. They are looking for they are husbands. looking for husbands and they are usually in a haste. So there are instances you would hear a girl say, all I want to do is get married. It's as if the marriage is her priority. Mm -hmm. And they fail to understand that uh, before you get into marriage, you should know the person you are dealing with. Yes. And at least you should have something doing, mm -hmm. like a job, if you're an entrepreneur, yeah. selling something mm -hmm. to be able to be supportive. Mm -hmm. But they don't, they lose the sight of that. And then um, at the long run, they are being called liabilities and a whole lot of things. And it ends up in broken homes and broken marriages. Yes. Yeah, so it's sad, but I just hope that every I, I know that definitely if it is meant to be it will be i just want i wish the youth will take their time mm -hmm. um choosing who is it's not about choosing who is right but sometimes you just have to know that this person these are the things the person lack that i need in him and i'll be willing to manage with that aspect of him it will make sense than just seeing the person and not knowing him just because you want to get married mm -hmm. you rush into it and because they rush into it, um, they don't take their time. And so they see any, anybody that just comes to them and approaches them, they feel like, yeah, I found the one, I found the one. Yeah. And they get into the marriage and the next day. So um, let me say from 2019 to 2020, I have personally seen marriages that uh, happened maybe a month ago mm -hmm. and they are breaking up. Marriages that last two two months, oh, three months. That's very short time. Very okay. short. That's because I think they rushed into it, mm -hmm. or maybe they didn't know the person so yeah. well. But because they were, they, they had pressurized themselves, and they all they wanted to do, their goal looked like marriage. They just wanted to get mm -hmm. married. And so, is it easy to get divorced? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very easy to get divorced because uh, I think the Christian really do the court signing yes. and everything. Mm -hmm. But the Muslim side, we don't do it. You don't sign it. But of late, I, I know people mm -hmm. who are Muslims mm -hmm. who have gone to sign. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's now coming So it up. depends if you sign uh, the paperwork or not? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you and don't, it doesn't really yeah. matter. I think if you sign the paperwork, it's different because mm -hmm. it will be very difficult. Yes. Yes. But if you don't, even with that, the families will try to solve the issues. Uh, they will try as much as they can until they just realize that there's no solution. Mm -hmm. I think there's also pressure from, you hear families and friends, maybe you are my friend mm -hmm. and you are married. And I'm not married, I'm still your friend. Mm -hmm. Then someone comes to ask me, your friend is married, why are you not married? Yeah, why are you married? So, there's this pressure on the person. The person starts getting anxious of getting married. And all this leads people into wrong marriages, mm -hmm. breaking ties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about period for women? Is it taboo here yeah, to talk about it? Like menstruation? Yeah, menstruation. Do you oh, talk no, no, about no. it between women, but even with men? Yeah, we talk about sex with women. There are even instances you go for seminars mm -hmm. and there are men who are talking about it. Okay. Yes. So it's not a taboo here. Mm -hmm. um, we are taught how to keep ourselves yeah. um, clean during that period mm -hmm. because uh, during that period you could really get a lot of infections. Mm -hmm. Uh, if and then if you are not taken good care of um, you could really smell mm -hmm. even when you are working and no one is seeing mm -hmm. it you could smell so we are really we were taught in school from the primary four upwards primary four to GSS and then the SHS but university or tertiary they know that you are you know what yeah, to do with yourself mm -hmm. you should you have the knowledge okay. for all that so we, we men and women talk about it mm -hmm. it's not specifically for women and we don't shy away educating mm -hmm. people about um, that aspect of us and um, it's something we want people to learn it's something mm -hmm. we want people to know and so sometimes there are these donations made in schools okay. they come to share parts mm -hmm. when i was in um, the um, junior high school mm -hmm. they came to share us parts okay. yeah For once in a while they shared parts and they taught us what um, that during the primitive days, mm -hmm. like the olden days, what they used, they were using, mm -hmm. and how they went about everything, and they, they they also taught us. How
how to use the pads, even mm -hmm. how to put it on okay. the pants, okay. how many times you should buff, how many times you should mm -hmm. change it. Okay. Um, do women have access to pads? Like every woman has Yeah, access. unfortunately for us in Ghana, pads are for sale and it's uh, kind of getting expensive. Uh -huh. And so it's not, uh, especially people in the rural communities, mm -hmm. it's not, they don't get it. Okay. So they tend to use um, cotton, mm -hmm. that's the best they have, their mm -hmm. cotton. If not, they'll just use um, maybe a, a cloth. Yes. Yes, that's and true. fold it uh -huh. and use it. Uh -huh. And some too, they don't know it at all. Uh -huh. So um, that was, I think, last three months. I overheard uh, a campaign about they making parts free mm -hmm. and rather making um, condoms um, expensive. Okay. Like yeah, they should reduce or they, re they should uh, reduce the, the yes from condom to yes parts yes from. yes. Okay. So I, I'm hoping that uh, everything will go on as planned mm -hmm. and then parts will be reduced. Yeah. Yes. That's a good. Idea. Because it will really help. Yes. Yes. And there's some NGOs too who purchase some and take to the orphanage and then com rural communities to share to them yes. and in that process they educate them how to mm -hmm. use it and all that mm -hmm. so yeah that's good yeah um and um, do you talk about sexuality with women or with men or with your family or friends yeah we do talk about sexuality we were we were taught um the reproductive health in school mm -hmm. Uh, that's about uh, junior high school where it talks to reproductive health and so you have a diagram of the female organ and okay. they show you what like the, the names female. and the, what they do mm -hmm. and we are shown the picture of the male Men. reproductive organ and what they do too and then yeah when you go to the, um, the senior high school mm -hmm. They teach you the same thing okay. and even more mm -hmm. and um, it's talked about in seminars mm -hmm. It's talked about in um, hospitals okay. and there are guidance and counseling mm -hmm. about all those stuff mm -hmm. too. So yes, we talk about our sexuality, what you can do to enhance yourself, what you can do to keep yourself mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And do women talk about it with their relatives? Yeah, um, in Ghana, it's something that is, it's not prone it's uh -huh. not known to everyone but it's every, not taboo. yes it's not a taboo but it's not every family that does it uh -huh. um, we have parents who um, came like those days uh -huh. so they still hold on to those um, norms rules and regulations okay. that some things are very profane and uh -huh. you shouldn't say it um, it will be very hard for you to see an elderly person of the ages from um, 60 upwards okay. just mention penis. It's, you hardly find that. But there are some um, homes, it's something they teach you okay. so you don't shy away uh -huh. from it. Okay. So you are comfortable to approach uh -huh. your parents uh -huh. when you have a problem. Yes. But majority of the homes in Ghana don't do that oh, and so that. you happen to read on it on the internet yes. or in the school mm -hmm. that's how you learn about okay. it and if you don't have the internet and maybe your school is not taught mm -hmm. that means um, you will not know anything about okay. it unless maybe your friends are talking yes. about it yes and that's how you get it and even when your friends are talking about it like it's going to be a low tone yeah. kind of a secretive uh -huh. something yes so yeah but uh, I think we will get there mm -hmm. with education and the internet we have yeah. right now. So I think it will help. Mm -hmm. Education is the yeah, key. Yeah, ideas is a key. And then mm -hmm. I hope that parents own up and, and don't shy yes. away from teaching their yeah, kids what this. they should learn from home yeah. so that they feel comfortable to talk to them whenever they have an issue. Mm -hmm. I think that will really help. Yes, yes. sure. And I heard that Ghanaian women were, uh, were very proud of their body. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> we are very proud of our body. That's mm -hmm. something we hold in high esteem. Mm -hmm. Like, a Ghanaian woman, um, like she's usually proud. 
and she walks with her head high like uh -huh. she's confident okay. in herself uh -huh. like she's beautiful she's got a shape she's uh -huh. yeah everything of us yeah we are very proud of our body and so um to see someone show off her body uh -huh. like just take off her clothes and things now nah, it's something that's coming because um people are inculcating the ways of the foreign uh -huh. like the western life yeah, yeah so you get like the slay queens i said trying to show off uh -huh. their butts their breasts their butts for people to get people's attention uh, and get I a see. lot of followers on uh -huh. instagram okay, and all those okay. places yeah but um a Ghanaian woman is very proud of her body and very confident and try to molest her like she'll own up to it like she'll challenge you okay yeah she's proud of herself and, mm -hmm. yeah and can women dress uh, as they want yeah women can dress as they want it doesn't matter what you are wearing just be decent mm -hmm. that's all because if, if you are and not what, what do you call decent um, maybe it's not the same for everyone yes it's not the same mm -hmm. for everyone in the Ghanaian society um being decent means covering um see your breast, your chest, uh -huh. your back, your bottles, your ties. Yeah. Um religious wise, uh -huh. you would have Muslims cover every inch uh -huh. of themselves. And then you would have Christians. Some Christians do cover uh -huh. depending on the section they belong to. They uh -huh. have Catholic, they have deeper life, assemblies of God. Uh -huh. They all have their ways of dressing. Okay. And some who don't really care. Uh -huh some would wear a short skirt to church and some mm -hmm. wear a long dress okay. and a muslim would just cover mm -hmm. but um despite the differences religiously the Ghanaian woman is usually decent mm -hmm. if you are seeing anything it's just her legs you won't see her thighs mm -hmm. yes and okay. you won't see her breasts so mm -hmm. she's covered okay yeah i see yeah. um um are women suffering for from um street harassment Mm, harassment mm -hmm. i think i think oh there have been instances but it's something that um, the activists are fighting strongly against men and women activists are mm -hmm. fight, fighting strong against and the, the law is no respecter of persons mm -hmm. even though ghana is free but our justice still stands okay yes so when you go wrong you face the strong arms of the law mm -hmm, i see but when you go in the streets as a girl mm -hmm. um do you suffer from harassment no you are walking freely you are on your own unless of course you are wearing something like i said that's not decent it's and it's not Ghanaian. Okay. it's a it's not a way of life of Ghanaians, mm -hmm. and so you get people saying stuff at you people rooting at okay. you and then you get uncomfortable mm -hmm. yes aside that um so it okay. depends the way you are dressing yes and especially it has to do also with where you find yourself the vicinity or the community uh, okay. in which you find yourself uh, it stop the yeah. place there are some, yes there are some places if you even wear um a very short mini skirt mm -hmm. and only a bra mm -hmm. no one will say okay. a thing but there are some places if you even wear that to pass the the they will put at you mm -hmm. people will sh like shame mm -hmm. at you and okay. then you become sad maybe you'll be ashamed of mm -hmm. yourself yes and sometimes it has to do with where you find yourself okay yeah and do you feel free as a woman in Ghana? Yeah. Free to do whatever you want. Like, yes. Uh, Freedom and justice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so Ghanaians are free. As it's not only Ghanaians. Anyone who comes into Ghana is a free person. Mm -hmm. You are allowed to do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do mm -hmm. it, provided you are not breaking the law. Uh -huh. Okay. If you are breaking the law, you will not be free. Mm -hmm. Justice will work on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are no respect of persons, your skin, your color. Everyone will be treated accordingly. Mm -hmm. If you break the law, you'll be dealt with. Okay. Yes, but Ghana is a free country. Okay. And I love that about Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you heard about feminism? And uh, what does it mean for you? Um, feminism. Hmm. Yes, I've heard about feminism. 
time where the woman um, builds herself up, owns her confidence, challenges um, herself to do better and more, aim higher, get to better positions in life to bring change to all of her kind. Um, but somehow, some are misinterpreting yes. it, yes, because you get um, people saying they are feminists and they don't want anything to do with the man. The man will limit her, the man is not her equal. No, that's not feminism. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I think that every woman needs a man and every man needs a woman. I think their problem is. Um, they find it hard to decipher being humble and then being a slave. Mm -hmm. um, the, the religious wise, the Quran teaches us to we should be tolerant, we should be humble before mm -hmm. our husbands, like we should be ready to serve our husbands. You can't rub shoulders with a man and want to be left like that. We are women, mm -hmm. but we can't, we are not supposed to be rubbing shoulders with them. Yeah. We can compete with them mm -hmm. for positions. Mm -hmm. We can um, speak out for our voices to be heard and their voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. Their voices doesn't have, have to be superior over us. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we should rub shoulders, we should disrespect. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't, it doesn't mean we should not see them as, as men, we should give them that due respect. Uh -huh. That is why I think they are called the men of the house. Uh -huh. Regardless of where you do or what you become, at the end of the day, your husband plays a role. Yes, yeah, okay. so I just think that um, feminism has been um, misinterpreted, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But it's a good thing uh -huh. when you really get what it uh -huh. means, what it stands uh -huh. for, and you are geared towards getting there it's a good thing but when when you misinterpret it uh, we um the, some of the uh, women we will be like no this is not what feminism is about yes. you are preaching uh -huh. the wrong feminism uh -huh. to people you are misleading people mm -hmm. like we will speak up yeah yes feminism but, is about equal rights equal rights and, and women, women and not to fight it's not to fight okay. not not to disrespect mm -hmm. not to see them as less mm -hmm. not to um um, show off yeah. and brag. No, we're just supposed to. We, our voices should be heard like yes. their voices mm -hmm. should be heard. There shouldn't be discrimination. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. And do you consider yourself as a feminist person? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Because I've worked with um, NGOs and um, I'm into groups and clubs that as and when the need arises. Mm -hmm we would stand up and speak. Okay. Yes, so yes, I am one, but I don't um, become so arrogant mm -hmm. no, it's about, not about it. That. Yes, it's not about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to have equal rights as my male counterparts. And when someone is not treated fairly, I should be able to speak up yes. for the person mm -hmm. to get the justice the person uh -huh. deserves. So basically, okay. yes, Okay. I am one. And um, now it's my last question what do you want to say to all the women who are watching this video <laughs> uh, <laughs> i want to say to all women mm -hmm. especially the youth and the young ones growing up i want to say don't give up i want to tell you to be confident i want to let you know that you are not alone regardless of what you are going through, wherever you are, you just need to speak up, get to the right um, offices or people to, and ask for help and they will help you out. Sometimes you have to be patient. In your patience, you shouldn't be weak. You should um, be audible, you should be able to be confident and Stand up for yourself. Be that power woman. I see the future to be a female. For now, the presidents can be males, males, but to me, the future is female because 
we are the mothers of the land. Mm -hmm. We are the empower. We are those doing the empowerment. We bring forth the children. We teach them what to do and what not to do. So if we can do this and bring up children who are upright in society, morally upright and everything, I think we can do more for ourselves. And I want to entreat that every woman should at least find something doing and don't just sit back and watch the men do all the work. You deserve that you can do it and even do it better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for this video. <laughs>